Welcome. In this video, we'll learn all about Salesforce forecasting. Let's take a look at how sales teams can use Salesforce forecasting to track real-time changes, customize their views, and improve forecast accuracy with deal insights. We'll begin by navigating to the Forecast tab and viewing our Opportunity Revenue subtab. We can easily get an idea of our own forecast and our team's monthly or quarterly forecast in real time, sharing all our weekly updates. On the left-hand side of the page, expanding the months shows us how each of our reps are doing. In the grid, we can see any recent weekly changes by hovering over a specific number. Each column shows one business and forecast categories based on the stage of opportunities. For example, my commit forecast will show our most mature opportunities. Quota attainment bars show us how each category compares against the relevant quota. Using the Einstein prediction column, we can add a layer of intelligence to our forecasting, seeing where our direct reports or entire team will land at the end of each month or quarter. Since every person forecasts differently, they can customize their view by selecting the gear icon and changing any settings. Admins can also customize your forecast by adding custom columns like commit coverage or actuals based on a formula or reference object. By clicking on any number in the grid, we can see how the related opportunities are performing in the table below. We can easily see which details have been updated. It's like this deal stage being progressed. And by clicking the panel icon for the opportunity by hovering over its name, we can get a deeper understanding of the risks and strategy for this opportunity. For example, this one has been pushed out repeatedly and a new detractor was found in the buyer relationship map. You can also see insights from recent call transcripts here using Einstein Conversation Insights. As sales managers, we can take a look at the manager judgment column. This is where we can express our opinion on whether an opportunity will close this month or quarter. Clicking the pencil icon triggers an adjust pop-up. And here, a sales manager can mark whether they think a deal is likely to land within this month or period. Back up top in the grid, we can see the roll-up of all of these finalized judgments by hovering over a number in the grid. Here, for example, we can see our total in plus one for the team at $3.6 million. Senior leaders are able to view a full roll-up based on inputs from all of their frontline managers. Once we've weighed in our opportunity, we can adjust our roll-up number to account for any additional factors we considered. Forecast submissions allow us to check off when we are done entering adjustments and a forecast is ready for review. Everyone can submit their forecast with a note. Managers can also review the submissions made by their direct reports. Forecasting isn't one size fits all, and so your forecasting experience needs to be flexible to adapt to the way you do business. That's where forecast types come in. Forecast types let us customize our forecasting process to match our unique sales methods and goals. Each forecast type shows up as a tab at the top of the forecast page. Forecast types allow us to see how our numbers roll up for certain products, business segments, or particular kinds of revenue. By default, your opportunity revenue forecast type is created based on standard fields on the opportunity and your user role hierarchy. But you can customize your own forecast types and setup. One way to unlock ultimate flexibility is by rolling up a forecast based on your territories, also known as your sales hierarchy. Sales hierarchies allow us to match our organization's sales approach, focusing on specific accounts or lines of business, for example. Here, our hierarchy is based on geography, but as we narrow in on our United States territory, we can see a breakdown of industries as well as geographic territories. Back on the forecast page, navigating to our territory forecast, we can see all of the sales reps assigned to the territories. and what their forecast is. As always, we can make adjustments to our numbers by clicking the Edit Pencil icon to the right of it. A window pops up for us to adjust our forecast and leave a note for leadership. And of course, we can scroll down to see the associated opportunities, all while staying in a single view. Let's take a closer look at two forecasting charts by navigating to the Opportunity Revenue Forecast Type and our chart view. Forecast charts help sales managers better understand the way their forecast has evolved over time. 
In the weekly changes chart, each bar represents a week in the current quarter or month, and bar segments show how each forecast category has changed. In cumulative rollups, the open pipeline is shown with dots. We can also see the Einstein prediction line showing where the team is trending to land by the end of our forecasting period. Since today is on the first week of our month, we're not seeing a history. As the month progresses, we will see additional bars appear showing the history of how we've performed. The top bar contains important KPIs like our gap to quota, and where Einstein predicts we'll end this week, as well as recent changes to get a quick overview of the health of our team's forecast. We can switch the forecast types the same way we would in the grid by clicking the tab we want to navigate to. In the second chart, the monthly or quarterly trends chart, we can see our team's current commitments and compare them to their performance in the past. Going from left to right, we see how the forecast looked with the same number of days remaining in previous months or quarters. In this example, that means we're looking at 28 days remaining in each previous month. This helps us get a more accurate forecast for the current period. Just like the weekly changes chart, we can see important KPIs at the top, including our closed one and quota attainment. Now that we've seen the basics of Salesforce forecasting, we're ready to streamline our team's forecasting process. We've learned how to assess opportunity risks, enter forecast adjustments, and use charts to benchmark our performance, all with the flexibility to roll up a more accurate number. To learn more, be sure to check out our other videos. You can also search for additional topics in Salesforce help or come join us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.